Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Darksiders 2 Apocalyptic Difficulty video walkthrough. This is the second section to the Rod of Arafel, and as you can see, I'm using this extremely overpowered Quake gun, and I'm splashing some dudes into a nice little lavery mess. There is pretty much zero I need to tell you in this video that I didn't tell you in the previous one, and you do not need help for this. This is about as simple as this game can be. Use distance, shoot them in the face, repeat ad nauseum. There really is no strategy here, guys. And if you're one of those people that thinks a good walkthrough is a guide that does nothing but talk about the gameplay all the time, then you can go fuck yourself. But if you already know that what to do here and you're only here to listen to the commentary, we've got something a little bit special today. I'm currently celebrating 8,000 subscribers, and I'm going to be incorporating a bunch of chat from the stream of people who actually watch these videos, who actually support this channel. And uh, we're just going to coalesce together and hopefully get something interesting. I'm not entirely sure where this will go because chats are always random, but we're going to be open for questions about Darksiders, questions about the channel, questions about future projects. This is essentially your opportunity right now to ask some things and get them in a video so that the people of the future who are listening to this right now will be like, oh yeah, I was in that, I was a part of that, or now I understand what this means. And immediately we've <laughs> we've got a dick joke me mention, which if you've ever been in one of my streams, it's all about the dick jokes. Big throbbing, veiny masts of manlyhood just, just you know, protruding forward like righteous sails against the angry sea. It, it truly is. Just nothing but dig jokes, but hopefully we'll we'll get past that and and, it, and it'll help. <laughs> but there's a lot of Dark Siders two left, so if you've got to this point, eh, you know once you, once you finish Earth, the rest of the game is pretty much in heaven. You're just doing all the the weird puzzles and one of the hardest puzzles on the game coming up in that section. And then a couple of bosses, and then you think you're you're about to go to the next stage of the game, perhaps the last part, and it's and it's over. You've done. You've beat the the last boss, I think his name is Absalom, and and boom, everything is over. But at this point, if, if you're not enjoying the level, it's probably going to feel a little bit like hell on earth. D -d -d because it it's very attritious, and it's attritious because you're repeating the same things. Like this guy here, he's called Nos, with, I think it was one S, I didn't quite catch it. And for all intents and purposes, all you have to do to this guy is shoot him in the face. But he fires those, those swarms of bugs at you. And you, you can hear the gun going click, 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 click. And for whatever reason, you've got to wait for the gun to load before you can fire. So right now, I could potentially be damaging him, and, I, and I'm not. Because, look, I, you can hear me trying to shoot. I click, 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 click. I'm, I'm doing my best to, to do damage. <laughs> and you've got to, to wait for the rounds to cycle themselves, which... A little bit of trivia for you here. Completely random and out of the blue. If anybody's ever seen Terminator 2 on the sequence where Dutch is in Mexico. Not Dutch, he's not even called Dutch, is he, in that one? He's the Terminator, Arnie. He's, he's in the basement picking the weapons from the Mexicans. He removes a dust cover off a minigun, and he, he cocks the barrel. And apparently, according to people who have used this weapon and know things about guns, that would have discharged a round. So there could have been an amazing outtake where he did that, and he, and he cocked the end of it, and he killed John Connor, and just, <laughs> just sprayed Edward Furlong and ended the film there. You know, <laughs> He disappeared, time disappeared, massive paradox. And I thought that was a pretty fucking cool piece of trivia if you've never seen it. Check out Terminator 2, great film. But we've got a question coming from a guy called Hyde Region, who I believe has a different name on YouTube, so you'll just have to watch out for him. So he says, anything planned for the future? What guides for what games? Which is about as vague as it gets. <laughs> but what I do know is, this guide needs to be finished. Portal 2 needs to be finished and Saints Row 3 needs to be finished. They're the three ones that, that need to be done. Because they've gone on for far too long and I want them to end. If I was a person who killed projects on his channel, I would kill these projects because I'm not enjoying them. But I've always adhered to one thing when I started and that is... I will always finish what I start if I can, and I will always try to keep a, a professional air about it because there's a part of me that's been treating YouTube like a job, and I don't mean I've not been enjoying it, I've been all callous and complaining, and as soon as I stop hitting record I hate everybody. Nothing like that, just, just a case of when you go to work, sometimes it's not fun, 
and you don't want to be there. The last thing on your mind is doing what you're doing, and, and I've tried to treat certain aspects of, of, like commentary, like this right now. Commentating this game is boring as sin, but it needs to be done, so I'm doing my best, and hopefully I don't come across in the videos as, you know, oh, this game is so bad, I don't want to do it. I, I try to at least be uplifting and sound more cheerful than perhaps I even am. And that's not me being fake, that's not me pulling, you know, YouTube 101. Hi guys, this gameplay today is gonna be me shooting things in the face on Darksiders 2. It's, it's not about that, it's not supposed to be that bullshit. It's just, nobody wants to listen to me, you know, essentially be in the worst day of my life. And some people enjoy when I do the rant, some people enjoy when I get angry, but that's different because that's emotion. A lack of emotion and just sheer boringness and one tone to your voice is never fun to listen to, regardless. You could be, you know, the most gifted comedian on this planet, the most gifted thespian or anything. Um, you will not sell an enjoyable commentary if you just sat there like, then you shoot these guys in the face. I shot someone in the face once. It was really, really good. That's not fun. That's not fun to me. I mean, if you do that and that and you think that's the best style ever, more power to you because you've got integrity and I'll probably hate you, especially to listen to. But that's what YouTube is about. You know, everybody's got their own style. Everybody's got their own, you know, function, their own way of doing stuff, and that's what makes it fun. Like some people have commented on a video on one of my gears videos, like, "Oh, you should you should commentate for horses because you can talk so fast." Like I. I slow myself down in those videos because I can talk a lot faster. I have this amazing ability to just not die when I don't breathe sometimes. So if you want me to shoutcast, I can shoutcast like a motherfucker. And uh, I'll put some passion into that stuff as well. But future future topics anyway, future projects. There is a Demon Souls playthrough coming. If the Demon Souls playthrough gets enough views, there will be a Demon Souls guide. Uh, I want to do Tomb Raider when the rental service sends me it. I want to do Crisis 3 when the rental service sends me it. I'm probably going to do the new Metro if it's good. But aside from that, guys, I don't really know. There's a part of me that wants to go back and do a, a, a triple S rank guide or S rank guide to Dante Must Die on Devil May Cry 4 and complete the circle. Because hundreds of people have asked for it. Hundreds of people have asked for it, literally. Uh, there's a part of me that, that wants to do Vanquish on God Hard, just because I want to do it even if I can't upload it, thanks to all the copyright bullshit surrounding that game. There's a lot of different projects I'd like to, to cover. So another question from the stream is, what game would I consider to be the best game of 2012? So I'm probably going to go with Dark Souls because I just checked a list of them and none of them really stood out to being, you know, all super amazing. And I was playing Dark Souls feverishly that year, so to me, that's my favourite game. Uh, so far of 2013, the best game has been either Metal Gear Rising Revengeance or Bioshock Infinite. I think both of them are, are exceptional on for different reasons and uh, really, really fun stuff. So, next question. I know you've mentioned that you'd like to sit down with developers and talk about issues in their games. If you had the chance to get a meeting with any dev team, what would be your first choice? Any dev team. It'd have to be Square Enix. Uh, because I would have said Squaresoft, but they're not Squaresoft anymore because they merged with Enix and they became Square Enix. And the reason is, uh, I would literally just... Why did Hironobu Sakaguchi leave? And why did Final Fantasy die? when he left. There's your question, answer it. None of that bowing bullshit, none of that polite bullshit, look me in the fucking eyes and tell me why when the creative director leaves this series does everything get worse. And not only does it get worse, but it continues to get better funding, bigger budgets, and significantly more linear, less complex, and just fundamentally worse in every conceivable way. Because Ten Two 2 was, was a fun game that had an interesting combat system, 12 had a lot of potential, but it just let me down so much because it was it was a it was an MMO, MMO with zero character development and some of the worst story and characters that there's ever been in a game. It was fucking terrible. And then 13 came out and made 12 look like the best game ever made because 13 is uh, hands down one of the worst RPGs 
ever created. And the only redeeming factor of it is it looks damn sexy. That is it. And that is what I would ask them because I, I am a Final Fantasy fanboy. I have been for a long time. One of, I used to worship JRPGs. Absolutely worship JRPGs. And I still think the best era of JRPGs was on the PlayStation, the original, because there was just so much going for it. PS2 had a couple of great ones. And what have we seen yet? We, we've got all this technology, we've got the ability to make better games, and RPGs have all turned into linear, you know, no side quests, no shops, no towns, no nothing. They've just turned into this husk of their former self, when the previous design would benefit so much from the, the new... The lack of restrictions that we've got now and it, it just doesn't seem it seems it's just madness to me and that is who I'd sit down with but before I ask that question I would probably fillet the man and try and get a job because I'd love to, to work with Square Enix but there's a lot of companies I'd like to sit down with I'd like to sit down with Activision Whoever's the head of Activision, whoever the guy who's in charge who says, in, next year I want you to do this again. Here's, your, here's the budget, here's the deadline. Copy, paste, repeat. I want to speak to that guy. I don't know if he's a financial analyst. I don't know who he is. But I want to just sit down and say, why did you kill Guitar Hero? Because I love Guitar Hero. And Guitar Hero 3, to me, is the best Guitar Hero ever made. I started on 2, and 2 is probably the best game, but 3 is my favourite. And why did they do what they did to that series? It... It's just sad. The first thing they should have done is they should have given a platform where bands, music labels, companies could put forward their music, automatically get tabbed together into a Guitar Hero chart and then put onto a marketplace where you could buy it for a very cheap rate. So indie bands, smaller bands, all kinds of bands could both market themselves and get their content out there. Because why the hell do I want to play Gwen fucking Stefani on Guitar Hero when it's like two chords and you sit there for two minutes pressing two chords? I want to play the most obscure metal, the most ridiculous solos, the hardest conceivable stuff ever. Give me Nile. Give me Beneath the Massacre. Give me, you know, give me something fucking good. Don't give me... Oh, blah, 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 spider web, spider web. I'd just shoot her in the face. But... I'd also like to sit down with Platinum, Capcom. I'd like to sit down with everybody. I would love to be part of uh, gaming journalism so that I get to sit down with these people because I've just got too many questions and a lot of my questions are very ignorant because I'm not aware of their world and if I was more aware of their world, I probably wouldn't be as harsh as I am. And if I was in a professional interview environment, I would still try to push buttons, but I would do it subtly with wordplay because there's nothing worse than getting a reputation for, you know, just setting people up for a firing range, or a firing squad, sorry. But somebody said, ever played Dark Cloud? I have indeed, I played it on the, the PS2. Interesting game. I've played Dragon Quest as well, but I never liked Dragon Quest. I got into that game because it, Akira Toriyama designed the characters, and the combat system on, on those titles is just, I thought it was terrible, I thought it was so bad. But I think the Final Fantasy VII remake that everybody keeps talking about or everybody's been wanting for so many years, I think Square have almost dug a hole with that because, you know, the moment they start making that game, although to all the people who want it, it's just them giving fan service to hungry fans. But I think on a pride level and an integrity level, if, if Square decide to make Final Fantasy VII, that is them actively saying that they have failed. And I know a lot of people might not understand that or might not see it that way, but I think just as a company, it's 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 abandoning you know the the belief that they have in these new games. So we've got another question here, folks. Seeing as how the gameplay is 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 willfully simple, shoot the enemies back backpedal while shooting. It's if you've ever played a third-person shooter, this section is cake. There's a checkpoint. No excuse to to have any real trouble here. But. Somebody's just asked in the chat, this is Poundland Warrior, he's a regular on the channel. He says, if there was one game that you could wipe your memory of and replay again, what would it be? Which is a really good question, and I need to take a sip of water. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of games I would love to experience again. A lot of games for different reasons, like I'd love to experience the twist in Bioshock again, just because I think it was both nipple and penis erecting. 
Dark Souls, first playthrough of Dark Souls is always a fantastic moment because it's no game is like that game. Not even Demon Souls is like Dark Souls when it comes to that first experience for me. Final Fantasy is like Final Fantasy Seven was the first Final Fantasy I played. I'm not, you know, the people that did six and did three and all those. Seven to me was was a, a turning point in my life because I, I went from that to eight, and eight I didn't really like at first. I thought it was a bit too serious. Thought it was, you know, a little bit boring, a little bit too military. -y. But then I actually really fell in love with eight and nine, which is my favorite. Nine is is my favorite. Majora's Mask. Or, or Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time, that, when you get to the Master Sword and you pull that out of the Temple of Time and you turn, and, and that cutscene plays and you turn, and you grow up, I don't think there's been a moment as profound or as moving as that for me as, as a kid. Because it was just, you know, gaming, every so often something very special happens in a video game and it's, it can be moving, it can give you tingles, it can, you know, send shivers up your spine and all that kind of good stuff. And we don't get that often now because everything's a damn sequel. And the problem with sequels is you're retreading ground. You're retreading original IPs and you're, you're not going to have the same impact. But, I don't know, wiping your memory of a game is something I think a lot of us would try to do. Which is one of the benefits of getting dementia, because who knows, maybe you can play those games again. And you have no idea, but at that point you're probably carrying a bin lid to the local shops and nearly getting run over by the cars, so you've probably got more to worry about than if you're going to see the twist in Bioshock. But we've got, if you could work with any developer, who would you choose? Which is another good question. So many devs I'd love to, to, to work with. But I would like to work with Konami, and I'd like to work with Hideo Kojima, just to see the process. Because not only do you have Hideo Kojima, you know, signing off on all the things and just being really eclectic and weird and movie referential, but you've also got Yoji Shinkawa, who's the lead artist, who did all the designs for Solid Snake and all that, and all the Zone of the Enders designs, who's a fantastic artist. You've got a company that I can't for the life of me understand how they're still alive, because they just don't seem to put out any games that aren't pro-evo, or whatever else they've got the, the, the fingers in the pies of. Like, what are they doing, Konami? What what do they do to keep afloat? Because they keep going back to Metal Gear, and they haven't made a new IP in years. So I would really like to be in that, you know, that those meetings, those dev meetings, part of that dev cycle, uh, as a as a, an assistant to Hideo Kojima or as an assistant creative director. Because not only would you get a significantly different game, but I'd edit the fuck out of him, because that guy needs an editor, and I love when he indulges, but sometimes somebody needs to say, Hideo, reel it back. Just reel it back, please. Oh, we got another another good question as well. This is a little bit more to the channel, so this could be helpful. Uh, was there any other people or YouTubers that inspired you to start uploading and crafting videos? And the answer is yes. So let's 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 take you down the memory lane. There was two, two people that had a big effect on me. The first one was a guy called John Tarr. He's known as Beer Baron. When I first got my Xbox, before I got my Xbox, sorry, uh, I got really into Gears of War because I was watching it competitively on a channel on Sky, which was called like X League or something, and it was a game channel down London, and they, they played Competitive Dead or Alive, which was just a bunch of Asian guys in turbans that used to beat everybody in every tournament. It was always really crazy. And they had Call of Duty 4 on when it was in beta before it came out. Everybody was using MP5s with ACOGs, which made no fucking sense. And there was Gears. And I had no interest in next gen, I didn't. I was playing God of War, I was playing Final Fantasy, I was enjoying myself. And I saw Gears competitively and it looked fascinating. It was so strategic, so different, it looked so damn good compared to PS2. And I kind of fell in love with it. So I searched on, on online for some videos to see if I could see it. So I could watch, you know, a little bit of the campaign just to see what it was like. And I dropped upon a channel called Next Gen Walkthroughs. And there was a guy make it who'd made a walkthrough for it on Insane, the hardest difficulty. Like, wow, hardest difficulty. And he talked over the video. He talked over the entire thing. And he told you what to do. He told you, you know, how to get past what was tough, what he thought about the game. And he had a good voice, which helps. Good, good equipment, good quality, and a good voice. And I became a member of that site with the intention of doing the same thing. I wanted to get 
uh, capture card or capture device back when it was dazzles and things and they went into your computer and I had no fucking idea how to do that because my computer was terrible and I wanted to be a part of, of this, this culture so I joined the forums back when nobody was on the forums this was back when they only had I think six or seven guides on that site and they had integrity, they had a rule where it was hardest difficulty on every guide. And I thought that was so commendable because it was a tough thing to do. And I kind of didn't understand how to capture stuff, so I just became a part of the channel, just watching it and stuff, part of the website. And, and I kind of let it go at that point. I wanted to do it and I, and I was always asking friends who knew more about PC and stuff if they could help me do it or help me figure it out. And nobody really understood it. It wasn't, you know, an in thing to do. They were pioneers at the time for what they did. And a couple of months down the line, the channel changed. Uh, their, their website turned so that anybody could upload guides to it. So my dreams of, you know, one day learning how to do it and then applying to have a job with them was, was just cut. Because anybody could put the guides forward. You got nothing for doing it except for, you know, the pride of having your guide shown on a website. And then they started accepting guides on lower difficulties. And I'm sorry, folks, but when somebody put up a Devil May Cry walkthrough on normal... That was it. I was fucking done. I'm, I'm sorry. I, that might sound elitist to some people, but that's not what that channel used to be about. And don't get me wrong, they've done an intelligent thing by making it, you know, anybody can put it there, anybody can put it on any difficulty, because what it's allowed is it's, it's allowed for greater saturation in the market. It's a very smart business move. But from somebody like me who values integrity and who values pride, it, I fell out with them and I didn't go back. So I, I, I don't really watch them anymore. Never have. And I haven't for years. And that just, you know, forgot about it, left it to the side. And then Black Ops was about to come out. And I didn't like Modern Warfare 2. I went back to Call of Duty 4 instead of playing Modern Warfare 2 because I thought it was awful. I, I stuck with, with the one I enjoyed. Black Ops was about to come out. It was about August, something like that. And uh, when it did drop and I played it, I got really into the online. And I thought, this game is amazing. I'm going to try searching for footage of this game, see if there's anybody playing it. And I dropped upon a guy called Socrates, who put up Call of Duty 4 comment, uh, Call of Duty 4 content gameplay, and he was amazing. Like my all-time favorite Call of Duty player is Socrates, ex Socrates on Call of Duty 4. If you've never seen him, the guy's a fucking magician. And I watched him on Pipeline get 60 kills in a team deathmatch with a P90 because he was controlling the spawns. Doing a, he was just running around the spawns, and because the spawns back then weren't so fragile, they stayed where they were, if you know what you're doing. His entire team of idiots were a mile away, and he was in the spawn killing all these people, and it was, it was beautiful. So I sat down and started watching this guy's videos, thinking, this guy's fucking awesome. Like I used to be good at Call of Duty 4, I used to be really good at Call of Duty 4, but I was never this good. This is great. And I put one video on, and a guy was talking over it. And not only was he talking over it, but he was doing it well. And it was a guy, a little guy you might have heard of, called FPS Kyle. And at the time, he was pretending to be a Russian, called FPS Russia. And he used to do free-for-alls on Call of Duty 4, where he'd destroy people and he'd do this Russian accent, and it was really, really cool. And he talked about a HTP VR, which I had no idea what it was. So I searched for it, and I found one. And a week later, I ordered it. And a day later, when it came, my first Black Ops 1 commentary was made. Boom. And that's how it all started. And now Socrates has joined the Navy and doesn't really upload anymore. And FPS Kyle doesn't play games. Instead, he continues to be FPS Russia and shoots guns and has millions of subscribers and is living a fucking awesome life. So there you go, guys. <laughs> Just because to show how times have changed. But thank you for watching anyhow. I hope this video helped. I hope you enjoyed the, the different tangents. And you take care now.